Hello my friends and welcome back to another tutorial. In this week's uh, painting lesson, I'm going to paint something which I've already done, I'm going to show you. Um, it's a lovely little seascape. I put this on my Facebook page and I got great responses for a tutorial. So I'm going to show you the painting. Here it is, sorry about this camera jumping around. Uh, lovely little seascape. I framed it, that is ready to hang. And hopefully I can sell this, this is a beautiful painting. Um, so, 90% of this was done with a palette knife. The sky was done with a palette knife. Um, the boats, the waves, the ocean, everything. I did use a brush just to fill in the broad areas, but I used a knife for most of the painting. So I'm going to paint that for you this week. Now, I'm using 18 by 24 canvas, a fine big big box canvas, okay, nice thick canvas and what I want to do now is just show you how I prime all of this and get this ready for painting, okay, so I'm going to set the camera up here on a little tripod and show you how it's primed, don't go anywhere. Now, one of the things you'll notice about a new canvas, when you buy a new canvas, it's very rough and very dry, okay. Because in the factories they're just sprayed lightly with a tin coat of primer. Um, because you know they're kind of budget canvases. This is not a very expensive canvas. Um, I like to use these canvases and prime them myself. So if you notice your canvas is very dry, feel now if you can hear this, okay? It feels like sandpaper. It's the very same as rubbing your hand across sandpaper, okay? It's very rough. So what I do is, let me show you. I have a very fine sandpaper, okay? It's very smooth. There's almost any grit on this. Um, it's a very, very fine grit. So what I do is basically just give the canvas a rub with this first, all right? A good rub. There we go. That takes off the surface um, primer, the very rough surface. <coughs> Give it a little blow and so rub it off like that. Okay, so that's already now much, much smoother. The roughness has gone out of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a big brush, okay, and a big brush. And what I have here is this now is um, an oil based undercoat, okay, it's a very, it's just a basic household undercoat for painting doors, windows, that kind of stuff. I usually use a water-based undercoat, um, but they had none in stock this week, so I had to buy an oil-based. But it's the very, very same thing, because if you think about it, we're using oil paints anyway. Um, it might be even better. Let's see. So what I do is I put some thinners into this, okay? Some um, either white spirits or turpentine, and just give it a mix-up, just to thin it slightly. So I'm just going to now give my canvas one coat of this oil-based primer, okay? Just, and I'm really making this go fair, so I'm spreading it out an awful lot with the brush, okay? Really spread this out, because you want to need a very thin coat of primer on this. So, go right into the grooves, right into the canvas grain, drag the paint right across. Nice and even. Just very quickly, you don't have to be too particular with all of this. And a tin of this will go very far. You might get 50 canvases out of that. Especially if you add a little turpentine into it. Okay? One more. Now, if you're sensitive to, um, you know, thinners and paint and all that kind of thing, you can just buy a simple water-based undercoat as well. All right, and thin it with a little water, and just give it one coat of water-based undercoat. Now, I don't mind the smell of this. Okay, it's fine. I have plenty of windows open and all that kind of stuff. So there we go. You can paint along the edges if you like, 
I'm going to paint the edges of this when I do my oil painting anyway. But we just get rid of all the runs. Any paint that's running, drips, that kind of stuff. Just get rid of that and we are done. I'll clean this in some white spirits in a jar. Just leave it like that. And there we are. So that's primed. Um, I'm going to leave that dry for a couple of hours and we will then give it another very light sand of sandpaper. Okay, so when it's finished, give it a very quick rub and that will give you a beautiful smooth canvas to work on. All right, um, so I'll leave this dry and I'm going to set the camera up and we'll get on with this beautiful painting. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. I'm very excited to paint this because it's going to be, I think, stunning on a big canvas. So don't go anywhere, my friends. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. This is my canvas. Now I've zoomed right back because it's such a big canvas and I want to get everything into the camera. All right. Um, I have my palette here, my canvas, and I have a little reference photograph here on my phone. So you should see the reference photograph there. Isn't that gorgeous? Rich blues, lovely rich turquoise in the ocean and that beautiful silhouette of the dark sky against the white sail. Um, I'm going to use a palette knife for most of the sky. I will block in the blue color with a brush um, and we'll do some nice clouds then with the palette knife so this is it here we go my friends this is going to be fun i'll just do one part part one first with the sky so as not to overload you with too much at once i hope you don't mind i'm going to take some masking tape and by the way my canvas is nice and dry and i've sanded it again very lightly and it's really really lovely and smooth okay so Let's go and have a bit of fun with this. Okay, a nice tutorial of a sky. Masking tape. I'm going to mask off my horizon line where I think it should be. And it's fairly low down now, to be quite honest. It's probably a third of the way up, I would imagine. Maybe even less, but let's just pick a nice point here now because you want a nice big full sky on this. Uh, just try and get that roughly level, okay, or horizontal. I think that's probably near enough it's not far off that's a nice point for the horizon line so let me tell you what colors i have i have titanium white some cobalt blue some cerulean blue that's a lovely color for oceans uh let me show you cerulean blue blue hue a uh, beautiful turquoisey blue i have some phthalo blue which is, ver which is a very rich rich dark deep blue and some alizarin crimson a little Naples yellow, which I may not even need, and a little lamp black. So a nice simple palette for the sky, okay? I probably won't even use Naples yellow. That's more for the sails, really. So those few colours is all you'll need for this wonderful sky. Um, so let's start. I have my large stubby brush. Now, I also have some turpentine with a little linseed oil in it. You can see why it's kind of yellowy. Um, a little drop of cup, just a kind of a spoonful of top of linseed oil in with a little drop of turpentine. Um, that's all you need. I have it pre mixed in bottle here. Look, so that's it. That's my thinners. That's all I need. I'm going to just dampen my large brush now because it's a little bit firm from the last painting. So I'm just going to dampen it, rub it on some tissue just to loosen out the hairs and make it nice and soft again. Okay, and there we go, nice and soft. And you can get these from my website if you're interested, or just email me. Um, I have a beautiful set of brushes, large, medium and small. Um, perfect for this kind of work. And this is perfect for trees as well. You see the way that's kind of stuck out outwards slightly? Lovely for trees and bushes. So let me know if you're interested in these. Um, okay. So I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking, because this is such a large sky, what I tend to do in these situations is... I always take some linseed oil. Let me just get my linseed oil over on the shelf. A big jar of linseed oil, nothing else, just linseed. And I'm going to try and open this. This could be, ah, there we go. So I have the linseed oil and I'm going to put some of this on a piece of tissue and I'm going to just cover the entire sky with this. Just a very thin coat of linseed oil. So I have some blue paper towel here. And I'm simply going to take this raw linseed oil and I'm going to just dab some on my tissue and I'm going to give the sky area 
just a very light coat of this oil. Now, when I'm doing this, it's actually kind of soaking into the canvas slightly, but it still kind of sits on top of the canvas and it's a very light, oily surface to paint on. And that just means it really helps to blend all my colors together because if you have a very dry canvas if you're painting a big sky like this and if your canvas is quite dry what will happen is you'll put on one layer and then you go to mix another layer into it and you'll find that it has sort of dried in and that's when you start getting the patches of different color so the linseed oil just keeps the canvas surface a little bit oily and it helps your paint move around and mix together lovely and i get a lot of questions about this and particularly the, the Bob Ross method that a lot of people use. Um, so they would use perhaps a liquid white or liquid, liquid clear. Now, they're not too bad, but they're a little bit over the top, I find. The liquid whites especially, because if you put a liquid white on this, and then you mix a blue into that colour, what you're actually doing is fading your colour. So the colours become faded, because it's mixing with the white that's already on the canvas. So you lose that vibrancy of your colours. So I have a very light, oily surface. It's very, very light, okay? You can, it's hardly coming off my fingers. It's just very, very lightly oiled. I'm then going to start mixing colour. So I'm just dampening my brush ever so slightly. And you can see we have a very dark colour down the bottom. So what I'm going to do now in this instance is I'm going to start with the darkest colour at the bottom. And I'm going to mix some... Uh, let me see now. I'm going to take some phthalo blue. Lots of phthalo blue. I'm going to take a little white, just a little, and I'm going to take, now, it's, it's not a very, very blue blue. If you look at the, the photograph carefully, it's, there's a hint of warmth in this. So I'm going to take a little crimson as well, okay? And then I'm going to take a tiny touch of turpentine with a corner of my brush just to thin this a little bit. Then a little more white and the reason i'm taking white is because that helps make the color opaque and it gives a great covering power so it makes it nice and like chalky it gives it a beautiful kind of a chalky consistency and that will help cover your canvas really well because if i use phthalo blue and crimson on its own these are very transparent colors okay so what i mean is they allow the canvas to show through underneath and I don't want that, I want to really cover the canvas very well. So the little bit of white just helps. Gives it that nice thick kind of creamy pasty colour. Little bit more of the crimson and I might take then a tiny touch of lamp black, a tiny tiny touch. That's really just to help darken the colour down. Little more crimson, little more phthalo and I would say we're probably good to go with that. Give it a good mix around. Let's try. Okay, that's not bad. Now you can see what's happening is the oil that's already on my canvas, you see this? Really helping this to smooth and really drag out the colour and bring it right across my canvas. If this canvas was very dry, I would be just forever doing this, trying to cover the canvas. But you see, it just really allows me cover the canvas very well and all that's just from one brush load of paint so that's why I like when I'm using big big canvases like this and if I'm painting a big sky I will definitely give it a coat of linseed oil just to really help move the paint around now a little more crimson in that I'm going to add just a little bit of crimson through this um, because that bottom color on the picture is really like a deep warm kind of a purple it's not so much blue it looks like you know to the untrained eye you could look at that and say well it's just a dark blue even maybe a french ultramarine perhaps but there's a lovely warmth to the color which i really love and i really want to get that in and also i want that white sail to really stand out against this so Let's go really dark now. Let's make this really, really nice and dark. A little bit of black, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of blue. And just soften that colour right up all the way. 
Now, as it starts coming up, it's going to start getting lighter and lighter. So I'm just going to simply start adding white into these mixes. A little bit of phthalo blue, a little bit of white, a little bit of crimson. So now you can see it's starting to lighten up slightly. And look, you don't have to get this perfect the first time, all right? You can just keep adding more and more paint as you feel is necessary until you get the color that you are happy with. So don't try and get this perfect exactly the first time. Now I'm gonna get some more phthalo blue on my palette because we're going to use a lot of phthalo blue in this painting. And I like to just think of this tutorial as a sky tutorial, a nice simple sky tutorial, okay? Phthalo blue and some white and a little bit of crimson just to keep it warm, okay? And that oil is really doing the trick. It's fantastic. And it's only a very thin layer, so it's not going to be extremely oily, if you understand. It's not going to be overly wet. It's just really helping to move the paint from side to side on the canvas. That's really all it is. Going up, I hope you can see all this okay now on camera. You can. I have an awful OCD kind of a thing about the camera and constantly checking the camera because on more than one occasion, I have recorded a tutorial just to find out that the camera lost power halfway through or um, I don't know, just didn't record for some reason and it becomes really annoying and I've just this habit of constantly checking the camera to make sure it's still working. Now I'm going to go into some cobalt blue so that's then going to soften the blues as it comes up. All right. So we're now going into a much softer blue. right across side to side mix them up and down all the way look get a nice even coat of color on your canvas side to side right off the edge of your canvas i don't want brush marks okay there we go and we even have a lovely band of dark across there as well that's quite nice and let me again dip into some turpentine take some more cobalt blue some more crimson a bit of white and i want to go up here now and give this a nice lighter tone up on top. Now what I'm going to do is also, you'll notice we have cerulean blue on our palette. Yes. And what I want to do is I want to complement the sea. Um, so for example, if we have a lot of greeny blues in the sea, I want to put a few little touches of greeny blue in the sky just to help the composition, the overall composition, to help tie the two together okay so i'm going to take a little cerulean blue and a little cobalt blue all right and i'm going to go up here and just pop a touch of that in and you may think that okay it's very greeny but when the ocean is painted it will really complement the sky just to have little touches of that color on the sky as well do you understand cerulean blue and a little white and you might not be able to see these differences now, but I can see there's just very subtle amounts of cerulean up in that sky. They're very, very subtle. Pop a piece across here. Soften that right down. Keep going right over everything, side to side. Have a lot of fun with this. Let's bring this down here. I want to get rid of that band, actually, that dark band we have across there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken even more down here. So I'm going to take some phthalo blue, some crimson, and more black, okay? I just really, really want a very dark colour across the bottom of this sky. And that will really make an impact when we're painting the ocean afterwards. Soften that up. And you can keep going with this for as long as you want. If you're happy with just a simple blue all the way, that's absolutely fine as well. You don't have to go to all these extreme lengths. More cerulean blue, little black. Because I want to give the impression of 
a very dark stormy sky off in the distance okay off at the horizon i think that's even lovely now just as it is isn't that wonderful okay so we're pretty much done now i'm just going to stand up for a moment because i'm looking up at the canvas so i just want to stand up to make sure that we're good with all of that i'm going to just soften some of the brush strokes out and you don't really have to be this particular because i'm going over a lot of this with the palette knife anyway but i just like a nice soft background okay that's not bad righty oh on to more free hand kind of stuff um palette knives i have two palette knives i have three actually i have three different types of palette knives um i have this one which is fantastic for doing uh, ripples on the water so across like that with ripples or getting sharp edges for buildings okay and i have these two as well a large and a small and these are brilliant for doing clothes and all that kind of thing and let's try um let's start with the smaller one first i think so what i'm going to do is now to make sure it's nice and clean i'm just going to simply drag some white okay drag some white out fill your knife with some white now there's a little bit of blue on that as well that's fine okay that's even better again and let's look at the painting let me just take maybe a hint of that bluey color okay maybe it doesn't need to be so white now there we go you can see there's a bit of a nice kind of a cloud going along here i'm going to start that one first all right just to get that in simply let's just take the palette knife and let's just have a bit of fun okay let's just put in some clouds like that okay there we go and i'm kind of more i suppose more focusing on the edge of the clouds those top edges they're the kind of point that you're going to see because if i show you now in just a moment everything below that is going to be talked of softened in okay so i'm then going to just soft come down here and i'm going to soften all of this into that blue underneath you see drag it across and let it sort of disappear into the sky there we go and depending on how sharp you want all of these clothes and how prominent you want them to kind of stand out you can let's say we didn't like this area here okay let's just soften this then upwards i'm doing little circular motions you see and i'm just going to soften that upwards into the sky you see that just creates a wonderful natural cloud off in the distance and let's drag it across soften it across and by doing that you see with the palette knife you get this wonderful kind of stippling effect and it makes it very very sort of natural doesn't it now i'm thinking it might be still a little bit bit on the bright side um so i think i want to dull it down slightly so i'm just going to basically soften it upwards you see so i'm taking off the bright white and i'm sort of almost mixing it with the blue underneath just a little so now it's not as harsh is it small little circles just like that and at the base of the cloud i'm just dragging it straight across now clean your knife so that's one nice little cloud we have isn't it now i'm going to soften that even more it's wonderful with the palette knife it just lets you open your hands up and become free with your hands you know you're not tied to a little pointy brush as such so you can really go to town with all of this now, a little bit more of that light white and i'm going to pop a couple perhaps just across here just to kind of sit the clouds down and create a few more off in the distance just one or two way way off in the distance 
Isn't that lovely? Now moving up to the top of our canvas, we have lots of stuff going on. And it's basically a case of just letting loose and letting your imagination run riot with all of this lovely cloud up here. I'm mixing a tiny, tiny bit of blue into this. I don't want it pure white, not at the moment. So let me just go up here and look, let's just pick out a suggestion of some cloud up here in the sky. Now I may need to stand for this because I'm looking up at the canvas and I can see a little bit of a sheen from the oil. So I, because the light is coming down and hitting the canvas, I'm kind of not seeing properly. So I'm going to stand just a little bit. Now that's better. I can see exactly what I'm doing properly. And it's a very, very rough sky. There's just lots of bits of clothes everywhere. So let's just go along. And I'm holding my palette knife right on the flat, okay? Flat on the canvas. And I'm using the palette knife then to, you know, get rid of any lines and marks that I don't like. Just by going round in little circles. This really creates a very random effect for the sky, which is wonderful. Because skies in general are very, very random, okay? They just, clouds, especially like this, clouds will go where they want and do what they want. So just be very random. It's just a case of popping white in here and there, just creating a very rough sky. And you can keep going until you're happy with it. You can keep, you can soften it out and blend it out if you don't like it. It's up to you, okay? But just try and stay free, try and stay kind of open-minded with the painting. And most of all, I suppose, really, the most important thing is just to try and have some fun when you're doing this. I'm gonna drag a couple down this way, look. Just create the impression of some clouds kind of swirling down out of the sky. Because again, this is all very random. And I suppose the goal here really is just to try and create a very rough kind of a sky. Let's just keep going, okay? Just adding patches of colour in here and there. And this freestyle is really, it's like, it's almost like a breath of fresh air when you're painting like this because there are no rules as such. You know, you can make it whatever you want. Just let yourself go loose. Let's take some more white. I may take a hint, just drag a hint of the blue out, just to take the vibrancy out of the white. Let's just scrape off the opposite side of the knife there. Pop more. And you can see, see, I'm just sort of dancing around on the canvas. Um, I find when doing this, if you're trying to be too kind of precise and trying to do everything just right, it gets very frustrating and it it doesn't help afterwards. It's much easier just to throw paint on and go crazy. Look, let's just go wild, have a bit of fun with this. So I'm not thinking landscape now anymore in the traditional sense of using brushes and all that kind of thing. I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking more abstractly kind of a feeling so more free more loose there's no rules you know um there's no right and no wrong when painting like this just remember that okay there's no right and no wrong just try and have a bit of fun now i might take a tiny hint of crimson just the tiniest tiniest little hint on a very bright white with a hint of a mauve in it you probably can't see it on the canvas, but it will just warm the painting ever so slightly. So I'm dragging everything around. You see? Creating a very rough sky. And I'm going to go up here and create a nice one up here. Like that. Now, isn't that fantastic already? 
we are already getting that impression of a very rough sea kind of a sky and all just from a simple little tool all right it doesn't have to be you don't have to have fancy brushes and all that kind of stuff just to paint a painting all right a lot of people have that misconception that you have to buy very expensive brushes and very expensive paints and all that kind of stuff no you don't um sometimes the most basic of tools is the best tool of all sometimes even using your finger can be the best tool of all when painting you know or a credit card or something like that something that you wouldn't normally associate with traditional painting so let's keep going now with this creating nice texture up in our sky creating a very rough sky and now i'm kind of glancing back and forth at the reference photograph to be honest i'm not too worried about the reference photograph um it's only there just to kind of look at colors and stuff like that but i'm just going to make my own sky my own completely different sky on this just very rough very random just moving the paint around and letting the paint do all the work okay leave the paint to the work because that's the job of the paint is to transform your canvas into a beautiful image let's go up there and sort that out and okay let's leave that that's not bad i kind of like that area that's not bad I'm only picking up small amounts of paint as I go as well. I'm not overdoing it with the paint because the idea is to let the knife soften the paint into the background. That's why I like to put a kind of a flat blue background in the background there. So the idea is to just let the palette knife soften all those colours together. And when we're done with this, when, when we have all of this area filled in, we can then go back and kind of put in little highlights and pick out little clouds, that kind of thing. So let me come across and put a couple more around over here. Okay, softening it up, dragging it up. And the beautiful thing about the stretched canvas especially for this type of painting is that you can feel the pushing in on the canvas it gives you that wonderful connection you can really feel the canvas under your your, your hands and your palette knife moving backwards and forth and that's the beautiful thing about using a stretched canvas for something like this canvas boards are fantastic when you're using brushes and that kind of stuff um, but for a palette knife it just doesn't get any better than a stretched canvas do you know what I mean? Now I'm going to put one or two in just here, just to balance out this side of the painting. Because I don't want to have everything just on one side. There we go. And we'll drag the knife across the canvas as well, creating almost like a stippled effect on the canvas where it's kind of clean. So for example, where this is all nice and clean down here, I'll just drag the palette knife across. You can see it gives that nice rough kind of look nice rough stippled look i'm actually dragging the, the paint off of the canvas that's what i'm actually doing to reveal the little bits of white on the canvas here and there now look at that already see what we've created in just that short time now i'm just i don't know if you can see the very top of my canvas up here will i because you see the angle of the canvas is kind of bouncing the light off of the canvas into the camera so you're probably not seeing very well up here so let me just see if i can move the camera a little bit uh let me see now i need to do this right i want to do this properly if i move the camera up slightly and then down and even if i move it out a little like that and then down would that help you see the sky a little better 
perhaps it does okay so we have a lot of our sky done i'm just going to quickly soften all of this back in just slightly here and there okay so i want to make just a very rough sky i don't want solid sort of clothes up on my sky so i'm just going to very quickly kind of go around and soften certain spots in up here for example i'm going to just soften that in a little bit more holding my palette knife flat against the canvas going around in little circles and so on and also along here Okay, so what I have now is a nice dark spot here for my white sail, you see? Nice and dark and rich, and that will show off my white sail beautifully afterwards. So you can keep going as much as you want. If you think you still want to soften it in a little bit more, it's just a case of just keep going around in little circular movements, you see? And I'm softening all of this back into the background slightly. Only slightly now, do you understand? Not too much. I still want to keep some form on the clothes, but not too much. I want a sort of a very hazy feeling in the sky. So it's very, um, it's just there's a lot of turbulence in something in the sky, lots going on. And I don't want very bright, solid clothes sticking out. So you can keep going now, softening in as much as you want. You can add a lot more cloud if you like. It's entirely up to yourself. Um, but uh, do you know what? I would not overcomplicate this. Just keep it nice and loose. Now, another little bit just around here, I'd say. Just like that. And we fix that. Just drag that across a little bit more there. Okay. And I'm even happy with that. But one thing I want to do is catch some real light on the sky, okay? So I'm going to take a little titanium white and a tiny touch of Naples yellow, okay? That's why I wanted to take the Naples yellow. Just a little of that to create a nice bright white. So let's just say for here, for example, nice bright white around there. So we just imagine the sun is probably coming across the sky, just sort of catching, bouncing, just here and there on some of the clouds you see clean the brush let's try another little tiny amount of naples yellow the smallest amount really is all i don't need it's just to create um, a glow in that white give the white the white some real pop just here and there okay And this really is the most natural form of painting, it really is. Um, and do you know what? It's actually the most satisfying as well. You get so much satisfaction from painting like this. You really, you really should try it. Um, forget about brushes, just for once, just forget completely about brushes and focus on just throwing lots of paint with your palette knife on the canvas. Just go for it, have a bit of fun. And it really loosens up your mind as well when you're thinking about what you're doing. It just it loosens everything up. And it, um, it just adds a whole new kind of feeling to painting. It really does. Just try it. I promise you won't be, you won't be let down. Now, I don't want to overdo any of this. I may pop a little touch of one or two just here. Maybe one there.
And it's, isn't it just amazing how fast we've created this sky just with a bit of palette knife? Isn't it just amazing? This creates the impression of the cloud popping over like that at the side, sort of being blown upwards. Um, perhaps another little bit just there. And you know, I would even say that's absolutely perfectly acceptable for a nice landscape um, sky, a nice seascape. I would say that's perfectly fine. I don't see anything at all wrong with that sky. You could just leave it if you're kind of not confident about keep going to keep going at it. You can just leave it. If you're happy with it, just leave it and move to the next step. So I won't have part two uploaded until tomorrow because I'm going to edit this part one and upload it and then finish part two and edit that and upload it so and so on. So if you want to just work away on this or you can wait until I finish part two, it's entirely up to yourself. Now, a bit more there. And I think I should just probably call this done, really. I think this is um, quite nice. Let me pop a little bit of there, look, just get some real brightness in that cloud right there, look. That's a real nice effect, isn't it? Being blown across the sky. Okay, I'm going to stand back and take a look at this. And my friends, I'm fairly happy with that. I think I'll just leave it alone for fear of doing something wrong. Let's zoom in and let me see if I can show you the top of this sky because I don't think you've seen me do it, to be quite honest. And there we go. And there's the top, top of the sky. Just very random, very, very random clothes. There we are. So with that, I suppose I turn the camera to myself. Let's go along this way. And there we are, my friends. Finished. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed part one. Part two is going to be really, really fun painting those sails and the boats and the waves and all that kind of thing. So let me know what you think. Give it a go, just be nice and loose. Um, you know, that even paint on my fingers, brilliant. Grab a palette knife and just throw on a load of paint on a canvas, see what happens. It's so much fun. I'll be right back in part two um, in the next day or so. Don't go anywhere. Um, if you want to support me, join Patreon. Lots of extra tutorials over on Patreon. Just like that, fantastic tutorials. If you want my stubby brushes, email me, stephencomma12 at gmail.com. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, please do ask and comment um, any questions whatsoever. I'd love to help. Uh, I got a haircut. It's a bit thin, isn't it? Uh, I'm getting very thin on top. But what harm? It could be a lot worse, couldn't it? Go on, have fun, and I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.